I already started off by saying creativity is an unfair advantage, right? So I've answered the question. It's a friend. Um, before I start, is there any creatives in the, in the audience? Any creative people? This is going to be a hard presentation. I'm going to get stuff thrown at me, right? So um, I am a UX designer, or I started my career off as a UX designer. Um, but before that, I'll just flip this thing over. It can have a delay, but I don't know why, why it's so long. Hi, guys. I'm like, This is like South African bandwidth. Maybe it's South American. It's not compatible yeah. with you. Just, you know, let's take a look. Yeah. Boom. Okay, thank Again, you. Again, I did it. So, thanks for fixing that. Yeah, no So, problem. the first thing is my mom used to cut my hair when I was younger, and I, I, I hated taking photos. But um, I started my career off as a, as a sculptor, a fine artist. And my dad said, Vanna, you're not making any money, and you need to move out the house. So, I did a, a BSc in computer science. And I started, and I discovered this whole world of user experience design, right? And I think it, it's a really natural fit. Um, from there, I went to a more evil world, and it is the, the evil world of advertising, heaven forbid, right? And I know, and I picked up in a few conversations last night, there's a lot of friction between user experience design and what advertisers do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But for a funny reason, I ended up working in one of the most creative agencies in South Africa, award-winning agencies. And my job was to work with these guys to, to kind of help them with technology, but then also talking, talking to them about, about the people that they're creating these advertising and these elements for, um, especially around the digital space. But I left uh, advertising, and I'm, I'm currently at Deloitte Digital, and we're doing all kinds of awesome stuff there. But I started to reflect back on the experience I've had, and, and I've picked it up in a lot of the talks today that uh, user experience design needs influence from other other parties, um, and that's what my talk is about. And of course, I need to share a few things about South Africa. It's one of the reasons I'm here, and I thought it would be a great idea to show you a TV ad from South Africa to explain a little bit about my country. So, uh, I was the other day. Oh, sensational. The beaches, oh. the sunshine, oh. the women. <laughs> <laughs> Tu vois les babouins Ils rentrent dans les maisons. Ils saccagent tout. So you sell the boss and they even have a name for it. What? Load shedding. Load shedding. God, I can shed a little load. <laughs> So that is definitely what South Africa is about. I can attest to that. And if I don't do a, guard, a good job here and I go back to South Africa, I'm going to be a car guard, right? Um, also, what I wanted to do is, as you probably have seen on CNN, South Africa has been in, in the news the last two weeks for all the wrong reasons. There's been a lot of xenophobic attacks, and that's kind of also the experience that I've had with Africa. Um, I've been traveling around in Southern Africa a lot, and I thought I'll show you guys this photo to explain to you what it is that South Africa is about. Um, this is a very, um, it's a photo taken by a friend of mine, a professional photographer, and it's a classic shot of Table Mountain. That's Cape Town in the background there, where I live. Um, and it's probably one of the most culturally rich um, cities in South Africa. Very creative space. But the rocks that you see in the, fr in the front here is actually taken, or it, the photo was taken from Robben Island, where Nelson Mandela was kept for 18 years uh, during the apartheid regime. So we have these kind of frictions and, and balances between what it is that, that, that makes us South African. Um, and then back to my talk about creativity, the first thing that I realized, and I, th I think a lot of my colleagues kind of confuse this, is that creativity is not art. The other challenge also is that you can't really define creativity. Um, and also, for, for user experience designers, creativity is not interface design. What creativity is about for a South African or more likely an uh, African, is that you need to think out the box. I'm an Afrikaans guy, and we use, we use the, f the term a boer mark a plan, roughly tra translated to a farmer always makes a plan. And I'll give you a few examples of what creative thinking that happens in, in, in Africa. So this 
is a guy who got fed up with people stealing his sheep, right? So he took a cell phone, a normal small cell phone, he attached it to his sheep, and every time the sheep starts to run a little bit faster, he gets a missed call at home. And when the sheep dies, he gets an SMS. So he kind of tracks what's happening with the sheep, right? Um, this is a guy from Cameroon. Um, he decided that he wanted to do something about heart disease in Africa, and he created the cardio pad. And that could monitor people's um, um, heart rates, and, and they can detect a heart disease earlier. And he built the whole thing himself. Um, the example in the corner here is uh, Nigeria. Once again, a lot of stuff in the news about Nigeria. But did you know that Nigeria actually has the second largest film industry in the world? And that's how crazy these guys are. Bottom here, it's uh, examples from Kenya. For me personally, as a South African, I'm very jealous of Kenya because Kenya's got a lot of innovation happening. Like, for example, the iCow app where people can check with, with feature phones what the milk price is before they have to travel all the way to, go, to take the milk to market. They have a device they call the Brick that ensures people and, and helps them to stay connected on the internet 24-7, um, even if there's a power cut. And we believe internet connectivity is a human right, right? And then also two people that I'm very proud of, the Antwoord. I spoke to someone from Russia this morning, and uh, the Antwoord is even there. And what's awesome for me is that the Antwoord is going all around the world teaching people to swear in Afrikaans. So ups to them, right? And then for me, I've, I've kind of hit this little roadblock recently where I felt that um, as, a, as a UX designer, being in this, in this space and wanting to do awesome things, I felt that I was keep being kept back. And a few things happened to me. I did a piece of work for, uh, for another agency, and I, I presented the work back, and then the big UX designer walked in, and he, he looked at the work, and he wasn't happy. And I felt like he was Simon Cowell, and I'm standing, and I'm dancing in front of him, and he's not happy with my show, right? But the thing is, he wasn't collaborative. He didn't want to help me move forward, right? And I, I thought, but this is not what UX design means to me. For me, it's about designing awesome new things for, that people want to use. And the problem I have with that is that a lot of UX designers, and maybe it's just a South African thing, um, I know the team that I work for, we're trying to break that, is that we don't want to follow recipes anymore. Right? So recipes in itself is a good thing. You follow the recipe and you bake a cake. The issue with that is if you're going to follow the same recipe over and over again, you're going to bake the, same, bake the same cake over and over again. So you have to have the baseline, but you have to add something interesting. And what is that something interesting that you add to that cake that you're baking. This is a guy that I work with in South Africa, John Hunt. He's one of the most creative or awarded people in South Africa, and he's written a few books about the big, the big idea and advertising in general. And I like this quote. He said, lemmings have plans too. He dedicated a whole uh, chapter to that, and I found it in my own career where people are so used to following the same rules over and over again to get into a, a sure result that they will stop people from innovating or moving a little bit to the left. What I'm saying is not radical change, but just think out the box a little bit, you know? I don't want to be doing the same banking apps over and over again. And just what I saw from Toby now, that's awesome stuff happening right there. But then when you go and look at the mass, some of it's really the same all over and over. Um, I also want to now use some of the uh, examples of work that I've seen and what I've experienced in the advertising space to show you how the advertising, the traditional people, the people that we hate so much, use hate loosely, how they think out the box, and I think we can learn something from them. So this is an example that the team that I worked with did for, for Adidas, and they went out and they looked at... Um, uh, uh, what is the word, hairdressers, is very informal sometimes in South Africa and in broader Africa. The guy will sort of set up shop in the road, find a car battery, plug in his, his clippers. But then what he'll have is he'll have like advertising that he's hand-drawn. So you can walk up and say, I want the number one, and you select, you select your hairstyle, right? So what we did with Adidas is that we actually went and we put all the football players in the same space. We hand-painted all the stuff. Oh, I say we, it wasn't me, but I can't paint for hell. But uh, like the, you know, and they did the whole design in the sense of that. And when you go out outdoors and you see these big things, it kind of really resonated with the audience. I'm going to skip the next example. Um, this is an example that is really close to me as well, because at Deloitte Digital, for instance, we really focus on getting to the mass market. As a user experience designer, that can be really tough, right? It's easy to do when you use a smartphone app or uh, you know, a, a tablet app. But we have to focus on this as well. I don't know if you guys 
have ever seen one of these bad boys. This is the AK-47 of phones, and a lot of people still have these things in their pockets in South Africa. And what is really interesting to me is how can I innovate to build experiences on this little device? And I want to show you an example of, of, a, of an agency that did just that in South Africa. And this is a, a beer ad or a beer project. South African men love two things, soccer and Carling Black Label. It's South Africa's biggest beer. And when soccer fans crack open a Carling Black Label and watch a game, chances are they're watching Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates. They're South Africa's biggest soccer clubs. But Carling Black Label noticed that the fans were getting more and more frustrated with the coaches. The coaches were coming from foreign countries like Brazil and Serbia, and they weren't as connected with the local flavor of South African soccer. The fans believed they knew their soccer clubs better than the coaches. All South African fans needed was a chance to prove themselves. So Carling Black Label gave the power to South African fans by creating the Carling Black Label Cup. The fans could pick the players for their team. The fans could make a live substitution on the day of the game. For the first time in football history, the fans could literally be the coach. We launched the campaign in TV, press, radio and online with Dutch coach Ruud Gullit. Soccer fans immediately began voting for the players they wanted in the team by using the unique code under the cap of their Carling Black Label. The only thing a fan needed to cast a vote and become a coach was the one thing South African fans already had, a cell phone. We designed and built a unique mobile platform that gave the fans a chance to vote for the players they wanted. We built a website where fans could see their teams and share it on Facebook and Twitter. After seven weeks of intense voting, the teams were announced, as selected by South African fans. The campaign ignited fierce debate in the media between fans, purists, players, and journalists. Even the coaches got involved. One thing wasn't up for debate. South African soccer fans loved the idea. We received over 10 and a half million votes in seven weeks. Tickets for the historic match set new records. With over 85,000 fans attending, and millions more watching on TV. The game itself couldn't have played out better. The first Carling Black Label Cup was decided in a dramatic He's thinking about where he's going to place it. Orlando Pirates have won the inaugural Carling Black Label Cup. Orlando Pirates. Um, this is a guy I worked for, a, a huge uh, mentor to me when I was in the, at, the, at the ad agency at TVWA. And when I spoke to him about the talk that I was going to do, and we, we kind of said, Vanna, you're crazy. You're going to get to talk about advertising to UX people. Um, and I said, I think there's definitely a connection. And after speaking to him a little bit, we, we both agreed that creativity is a growth engine. So for as much as people do the same thing, at some stage, someone's going to break the mold. And what's that little hop? And Josh spoke about it before, and I've seen it so many times, where people iterate and focus on this one problem that they have but you actually have to leapfrog. Frog. And there's a lot of people kind of refer to different things. For me personally, that's what creativity is about. But then again, what does this guy know, right? Um, and I want to talk to you about the example, a piece of work that he's done that is one of the most and the most awarded campaigns ever. Um, and the campaign was for Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe news newspaper. I don't know if you guys know about Zimbabwe and the problems they have there. So South Africa's right at the southern tip, and then you have Zimbabwe as kind of our, our neighbor, right? And they've got this awesome president, uh, Robert Mugabe, and he's taken a lot of people's farms away. And um, he's chased a lot of people out of his country that don't agree with what, what he sees. And in fact, he's a lifelong president, right? But this awesome policy has also created hyperinflation in his country. His money was worth nothing, right? I think they're currently running on the US dollar because uh, the, the whole system has fallen apart. The Zimbabwe newspaper wanted to start getting awareness out about what's happening in Zimbabwe because usually it's the support that, that from other African countries and internationally that helps make change, right? But then again, they didn't have any, any budget. And I want to show you what they actually did. What they did is they went across the border, my, my former colleague, and they went and they fetched a whole bunch of notes. And because it's so worthless, they could get buckets and buckets, loads of notes. And what they did is they did the trillion dollar campaign. And this is all Zimbabwean money. And they ended up doing billboards, posters, leaflets, all built out 
of, of Zimbabwean money. And I think this is super powerful. And for me, from day to day, this is a, this is an inspiration that a small little idea can make a huge, huge difference. You can have a look and maybe I can pay for some beer with this afterwards, maybe half a beer. Um, and I'm just going to skip over. So, but maybe he was lucky. Maybe he didn't, I mean, it's just a spurt. Maybe they had a few beers to many and came up with this idea. I disagree. So I want you to think, let's say a client came to you and challenged you to do an a eye test solution. To do it, you know, um, to, how can you motivate parents to take your kids in to get eye tests done? So this is uh, what Damon did in the end. Um, this is an example of, uh, this is called Penny, Penny the Pirate. It's a, it's a campaign he's done in uh, Australia, by all means. And what he's, what he's done over here is that he actually went out, found an illustrator, his team did actually, and they did this whole children's book. They created an application, an IP application, so you could either buy the book or you can download the app. And then the mom will sit with the kid and they will read the story. But what happens through the whole experience is that the kid is actually getting their eyes tested. And I just think that's a brilliant way. And for me, there's a lot of user experience and human experience insights in that, in that, in that interaction. At the moment, this campaign is already sitting at about 50 international awards. And I believe this is something that we as user experience or human experience people can do as well. The challenge, though, is that, uh, and this quote from John Lasseter, the, one of the big guys at, uh, at, at Pixar, is that, Creativity is a sweet spot between the known and the unknown, where originality happens. And the word originality is really important for me because the clients that I work for at Deloitte want original solutions, original meaningful solutions. The challenge, though, is to linger in that space between the known and the unknown without freaking out, right? And a lot of people don't like that. So for me, I think there's a definite change that can happen in the user experience space. And I think a lot of the talks I've seen today kind of really inspires me. Um, so yes, I do love wireframes, and I believe wireframes can change the future, right? This is John Lasseter's example of a Wally B who changed a whole industry. This is where Pixar was born. The challenge, though, and I see this uh, happen a lot, um, I'm a very practical guy. Um, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in the trenches working on a lot of uh, projects, and when my team starts off, we have super expectations about what it is that we want to create, right? And then all these other people start getting involved. And for instance, in the world of, of Deloitte, um, we don't use strategy lightly because it kind of in, implies a huge bunch of work that needs to happen. And then you go through all these, all these steps. And then where the expectations start, at the end, the product that you've created is kind of this minimal thing that is not really that awesome. And lots of times when I ask, what's going on? What, what happened here? They'll say, like, yeah, but the client's getting what they paid for, right? Or we ran out of time. Or the best one ever is we're using the latest technology. And if you want to do something for phones like this, the latest technology doesn't work, right? I believe this is what it needs to look like. And I'll tell you why I've done these kind of strategic slides right now, right? So each and every step in the process, be it agile or whatever process that you use, needs to inspire the next step. The challenge for us as UX experienced people is that I believe the strategy in the UX space is kind of molding in, into one thing. And for, for, for us, UX, I believe, is the pivoting point. We are the people who need to inspire the next step. We need to allow, and maybe sometimes we need to be the people to create these awesome products. They need to exceed the expectations of what clients do clients want from us, right? And what, what our human beings that we are building for want from us. So I kind of defined a few steps of, of, and these are the things that I implement or try and implement in, in small bite sizes. The first, the first option is to be an explorer. So be the one who goes out there and try and push the limits. But you have to do that carefully though, because I mean, I've had, I always laugh, I talk about this example when I was in advertising, a guy wanted me to help him find a way to strap a camera to a cat. And I'm going like, you want to do a camera to a cat and then people can see it on YouTube and then see it, on, but why would people want to do that, right? The thing is, uh, when I talk about living on the edge and, and exploring, it's about the adjacent possible. The example I have here is a guy called um, Tim Presterio who decided that he wanted to do something about infant mortalities in Africa. The challenge we have with uh, incubators in, in Africa that people send us from, from Europe is, is that um, when they break, they can't be fixed. 
So Tim decided he's going to do something about it, and he designed the incubator that works off car parts. So the thing breaks down, it can be fixed in Africa, right? And that is like living right on the edge. No one thought of that, and he just stepped over the possible into the adjacent possible. See music in the noise. Be the facilitator. So many times we want to stop people from having stupid ideas. Um, there's this Berkeley professor called uh, Charlene Nemeth that spoke about um, or did a, a whole research piece where she actually proved that if you add noise to the system, you actually get better ideas and better solutions because the brain makes new connections. So don't be scared. Sometimes add a few crazy ideas into the mix as well. And when it gets really crazy, think about what Leonard Cohen said. It's the cracks that let the light shine through. So those little errors and, and, and kind of uncomfortable stuff will make you get to the solution that you want. The third one that I'm really precious about is love the inmates. So I, when I started in UX, I read the book, Inmates Are Running the Asylum, where it's about the developer people, then the UX people. We think about the human beings, and they're crazy there in the corner in the basement where they sit, right? And I found that the more that I interact with developers, um, architects, um, researchers, the more ideas that they bring to the table, what I become is the person who actually connects these different ideas together. And the solution that you get starts to make that upside down, down pyramid. Then the other issue that I, what's also kind of close to my heart, and sometimes, especially in a smaller country like South Africa, right, is that we all have our little businesses, and sometimes there's maybe a small UX business, and you kind of want to keep your business for yourself, you want to have your clients. And I believe that UX is open source. Everybody, this is everybody's problem, right? In fact, I worked for a digital, as a digital strategist half my career, and what I've done is I base a lot of my thinking on user experiences on, not Web 2.0 digital strategy stuff. I've put up a photo of Jeff Box, and we need more people like Jeff, people who mentor people, and the thing is, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be stand, standing here, because when I wanted to give up on user experiences, um, he took his time, no charge, and helped me along my career path. Um, and the challenge with that, though, but also the good thing is, uh, Phil Barrett, the guy that I work with in, in South Africa, we spoke about this, and he said the fact that we start teaching people to do UX and innovate in, in UX and giving them all our knowledge is that we need to improve ourselves as well. And for me, there's a proof in that when I see human experience and how UseLab is evolving themselves. Because I think there's a lot happening with the people sitting in the forefront of UX and how UX is evolving. But then I want to close with the following quote, right? I need to bring it back to creativity. It's that creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. Thank you very much.